the, the Genovese boss, yeah. tried to kill John Gotti several times yeah. precisely because he didn't have the permission of the commission. But anyway, to get back to your question, yeah. you know, we had to figure out, we went from tapes being the centerpiece to Sammy being the centerpiece. I had to, we didn't, I didn't want him the German of the trial. Yeah. I didn't have any counts. We parked Sammy in the director's suite at Quantico. Yes. And I spent, uh, I spent a couple of months shuttling back and forth with uh, George Gabriel, this unbelievably yeah. great FBI agent. Absolutely. Sammy, getting him ready to testify and presenting a case that did not really look anything like the case we were going to try 10 weeks earlier. Now, um, as, you know, as, as a lead prosecutor, you know, going in, and I love that finish that, and pitch, did you know you had him or like, you know, when the jur jury's liberating, you were still that little bit of seed of doubt or did you know he was dead to rights? You know, he, I, I knew we would, you never know with a jury, yeah. but in that first case, he acted like he didn't have a care in the world, yeah. but wow, this guy's pretty cool. Your listeners are going to have to read the book to figure out why, why that was the case. Yeah. In the second case, Gravano was a great witness and Gotti acted like a caged animal. He was all over me. Yeah. The judge was all over him for being all over me. And everybody in that courtroom knew the the minute, you know, once we were like an hour into into Gravano's cross and they yeah. saw it was everybody knew John was going down. Correct. That's when I found out there was a contract on my life, by the way. Everybody knew John was going down. And so I got to say, when we got the note, there was a verdict. I was thinking, geez, you know, it's a quick verdict. Conventional wisdom is you get a quick verdict. It's an acquittal. Correct. I was thinking, am I going to go in there and, and then and like stake my claim as my career? I'm in my 30s. Yeah. The only guy in the world who could not prove that John Gotti committed even one crime in yeah. two. So I was I was a little worried about that. But uh the case could not have gone in better. We had a really compelling case. Yeah, and obviously resulted in a conviction. Um, his sentence, I'm assuming you were, like, you guys obviously gave recommendations. Do you think his sentence might have been even harsher because of his high profile, or was it suitable for the for the conviction? No, he, he was facing mandatory life. He, yeah. You know, we committed five murders. The judge had to impose life. The sentencing proceeding was fascinating because – it took about 15 minutes. You know, I didn't say anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, they are talking during the trial. The defense lawyers didn't say anything. It was mandatory life. Um, there was a riot outside the courthouse. There was a lot going on. Yeah, but free, free, free but in, in the courtroom, it was like the most anticlimactic part of the case. Now, um, so okay, so I can just figure out how to frame this. So I, I get all this and it makes sense, right? And and I interviewed Sammy and I took kind of a business angle. I didn't judge him on his morality and frankly, I'm friends with his daughter. And I just, I just wanted to, to like, I, I'm fascinated with the experience, right? John Gleason, Bronx born, John Gotti, Bronx born. Um, you got to read the book. They're related long story. Um, but nevertheless, two guys from kind of a similar background, you can argue, you know, Irish, Italian, hardworking families, but, you know, one went right and one went left, right? And the reason why I was fascinated with Sammy is they, them two ran a $500 million organization. Whether, you know, let's move the morality from it for a second. They ran a $500 million organization. Now, my question to you, Judge, is could these have guys been a Fortune 500 CEO or were these guys just destined for what they were destined? Because this is something that I'm super fascinated.